Hello and welcome back to the channel and another Arkham Horror uh, fan made scenario. We will be doing one that just got released. The Color Out of Oz. Oh, this is another Alice in Wonderland. Not Alice in Wonderland. Wizard of Oz scenario. Neat. Okay, so today I'll be playing two scenarios as per usual. Let's see if I do better than I usually do. Uh, we have Jacqueline Fine and Akachi Anelli. Uh, we will be playing two Seekers today. Uh, Jacqueline's going to lean a little more on the clue gathering side. Akachi is going to lean a little more on the fine side, although they are both going to be decent flexes. So we are going to get right into uh, the color out of Oz. It has a new keyword, pervasive. It's a new keyword that appears on some enemies in the Color Out of Oz campaign. Pervasive enemies are put into play next to the agenda deck and are considered to be at each location following the keyword. Pervasive enemies always have the massive keyword as well to avoid engagement issues. Investigators still cannot interact with investigators at other locations during tests against pervasive enemy that is at both locations. Okay. Then the KX is a new keyword that appears. The KX is followed by... Uh, connected effect. X example to K1. Deal two damage to each investigator at this location. A card with the KX enters with X horror on it. At the start of the upkeep phase, remove one horror from each card with the KX. At the start of the upkeep. At the end of the round, resolve the connected effect of each card with the KX and no horror on it. Effect of each card with the K and no horror on it. Okay. Companion is another new keyword that appears on some story assets. During these some scenarios, these assets will be in play next to the act deck and are not considered to be at any one location. Abilities or well, companion assets cannot be activated except through abilities that specifically reference them. Fatigue. How many? Like a little bit too much, guys. Like just one or two more of the rules. You don't need like 18 of them. Anyway, fatigue. The color companions gain fatigue over the course of the campaign, representing their own trauma while facing the color. Some cards and resolutions will instruct players to add fatigue to specific canyon assets in the campaign log. This is done by checking the appropriate boxes on the second page of the campaign log. Fatigue has no no. Fatigue has no no game effect, except when explicitly referenced by the campaign guide or card effect. Each companion cannot have more than five fatigue marks their name. If at any point in the campaign, companion reaches five camp fatigue, cross that companion's name off the log. Companions with cross off names cannot be chosen during scenario setups or have corresponding sections of the campaign guide read. Companions in play that reach five fatigue during scenario are immediately removed from the game. So fatigue does do something. It, it kills companions. Like, you, you just said fatigue has no game effect. But then it says this is the game effect for fatigue. Whatever. Expansion icon. Okay, the prologue. Thursday, April 8th, 1926, Arkham, Massachusetts. This was not the first time the brilliant meteorite has struck Earth. Few but old Amani Pierce still talked about the strange days when the Gorner form was transformed into the blasted Heath, but the scientific record remained in the archives of Mescatonic University. That record spoke of the same alien color that appeared in the spectroscope the astronomers took of a second meteor approaching Earth rapidly last week. Claims and theories flew, but the scientists agreed that this time the meteorite must be recovered in full for both study and to protect the world from its possible destruction. Funding for an expedition was amassed in short order, including stipulations for teams of specialists with experience in the weird mysteries of the universe. In order, Read aloud each of the following sections to decide how each of the investigators prepare for the research expedition. Warning, make sure you read any amount of sections, but each effect has side effects. So each investigator chooses to observe the meteorite's approach. Hmm. Uh, we have scientific curiosity, facts of the case, lingering corruption, grotesque transformations, first person source, altered seers, and visions of space. Okay. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight things to read if we want to. We're going to do three. 
components. Where is it? D8. D8. Okay. So we're gonna do it randomly. Roll this three times, ignoring doubles. So first is four. So one, two, three, four. Uh, facts of the case. Each investigator chooses to hear a Manny Pierce's full account. Reads facts of the case. There's only one person who truly remembers the events of the Gardner Farm, and that's a Manny Pierce herself. You trekked out of the. F you trekked out to his farmstead and agreed to listen to his rambling stories in hopes of gaining some insight into your mission. Annie pried into your sudden interest in the color, and when you admitted that the color was returning, he flew into a panic. He ran about the remnant of the color and the well and on blasted heath and declared that a return of the color meant the destruction of all life on Earth, all told in vivid detail. The worst parts of his tirade still lingered in your mind, making it harder to focus on anything related to the color. It took time to assure him that no such fate would come to pass, but his tune went out to continue his interview at that point. In the campaign log, under preparations, record that you know the color's destructive methods. Um, do we have preparations? Uh, it's preparations. We know what? Another color's destructive methods. There we go. First. I guess. The hell is this? Anyway. Continuing on. Uh, for the remainder of the campaign, if you choose to mulligan, you cannot choose more than three cards to set aside. If you're playing as an investigator with a civic, detective, police, or agency trait, you already know this as fact as dealing with panicked people is routine for you. I don't think either of us have that. We're a clanvoyant and a sorcerer. So, yeah. Okay. Hopefully, I'll be able to remember that on the side of the screen there. Anyway, our next thing is eight, the last one. Altered creatures. Through the blasted hearth has been long abandoned by humans, the animals of the surrounding woods continue to inhabit the border region. You had heard of the effect of wildlife, but to observe the living mutated creatures would give you a distinct advantage. As you journeyed into the woods, you found that the creatures were indeed mutated, but their physical state was nothing compared to their mental one. The animals spoke or perhaps something within them, rather, in unearthly tones with unrecognizable words, but still clearly speaking to each other. This disturbing spectacle tax your psyche, but having recorded the effects, you can now better formulate theories about the cause. Well, that's disturbing. And your campaign law record that the, you know the color's mental influence. Okay. For the remainder of the campaign, you begin each scenario with one fewer chord in your hand. If you're playing as an investigator with an orchestra streamer, wait for it. We do not. So we also start with one fewer chord. Oh, I am not going to do well this scenario. I don't do well when I have whatever I want. I'm tempted to just stop right now, but YOLO, mama didn't raise no bitch. Six, which is this one, first person source. Amani Pierce is a sole primary witness to the event. He just went crazy. Event, but other farmers that used to live near the Gardner's farm remember the strange times as well. Unfortunately, many of the former residents had either blocked the events from memory or passed away without telling what they knew. You are still able to find a former neighbor who was passing by at the time the scientists first conducted their tests. However, anything related to the gardeners was taboo, and the man had to be persuaded to set his superstitions aside. While obviously embellished, the old former did tell of watching the violent tests of the first globule they found and how the color was fragile in its early stages. In the campaign log under preparations, we know its physical limitations. Okay, and for the remainder of the campaign, you begin each scenario with one fewer resource. Like, this better be an easier, slightly easier scenario if, if we're storing like that. Although, I mean, it did say bad stuff was going to happen, so we've only ourselves to blame. Let's go, number four. It's, it is, in fact, number four. Wasn't the four the first one I did? One, two, three, four, yeah. So we do that again. Four, six, and eight. Another four. That is the third four. Five. Got it. 
a lingering corruption. Determined to see for yourself, you made the journey west of Arkham to the Blasted Heath. Over 40 years later, and the land is still blanked and forsaken with the few rotting remnants of the Gardner Forum as its only landmarks. As you walk the grounds, a luminous glow from the remains of the well drew your attention. You cautiously peer down to find the stagnant water glowing faintly in an unearthly hue. After a brief moment, the dim glow suddenly flashed, and you felt a steady pull on your life force. Splotches of color began to seep up through the dead land, and you fled at once. Only once you had run clear of the blind land did you lie, light down, down again. Did you lie, die, lie, die? What? Who proofread this? Only once you had run clear of the blind scorched land did you lie back down again and recede into the gray soil. Did the light die down? Oh, did the light die down? I. Uh, da, 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 da. Only once you had run clear of the blind land did the light die down and recede into the gray soil. You escape with your life and some knowledge of the dormant color spread throughout the effect of the land. Record we know the full effects of the land. That seems good. Not the full effects on the body, but hey, it's whatever. Then, you suffer one physical trauma. Okay. Fine. Be that way. <laughs> because they both took... Both took two arcane research, restoring the campaign with three trauma. This is off to a fantastic start. With physical preparations handled by the university, you and your companions set out for Kingsport. Over the course of a week, the chartered ship navigated around the continent to make port in San Francisco. Initial estimations of the meteor's trajectory placed its landing site in the Pacific Ocean. The scientists earnestly hoped that it would impact on an island, or at the very least somewhere shallow enough for their equipment to reach it, but the Pacific is nothing if not vast. All they could do is sail to the general region and keep their fingers crossed. With your knowledge of the color, you didn't know which outcome to hope for, only to keep ready. It was just after dawn, three days into Pacific waters, when the meteor finally entered Earth's atmosphere. The expedition stood on deck with eyes skyward for the spectacle of Mount Pierce described, only this time much larger. An explosion rocked the cloud layer as friction slowed the meteor's descent, and a long plume of white smoke flared out behind it. Your eyes followed the trail of smoke down until it disappeared just beyond the horizon north of the ship. The captain gave a call to stations to brace for the expected wave of water from the impact. Tense minutes passed, but the sea remained placid. Confused, the officers confirmed their position and checked navigational maps. By all accounts, there should be only open water for hundreds of miles in any direction, but the evidence was clear. Somehow, the meteor made landfall. Scenario 1, The Road to Oz. Um, the white plume left by the meteor's ascent guides the expedition steadily but warily forward. By mid-morning, land rises above the horizon to view, and by noon, Strange lights are clearly visible in midair some distance in from the shore. With the strong possibility of immediate contact with the color, you and your closest allies are elected to go ashore first to gauge the danger. Uh, thanks, everybody. Just have the two women do everything. To make matters worse, you must venture onto an island that shouldn't exist. There's no telling if anyone or anything inhabits it, nor how hostile such parties might be. After your preparations are finished and a small show made of wishing you good luck, you set out for the shore. A temperate forest crowds most of the shoreline, but the shifting glow of the covered lights shines through. Even without the strange aura, there is something about the island that doesn't quite fit into the world that you know. The scenery is as lush and bright as a fairy tale picture. For about half an hour, you journey inland until you come to a wide clearing and a very unexpected sight. Amid the open field and glass, Amid the open field and surrounded by neatly tinted hedges stands a city made entirely of glass. Each building shifts in color, lit from above by the slowly changing lights. You see unobstructed by the forest now that there are six multicolored orbs beaming brightly down the landscape, coloring it as the beam cycles. You're not certain whether this display is linked to the color or not, but a stranger spectacle presents itself a bit closer to the ground. People begin to emerge from the glass city, moving slowly and elegantly, but there is something unnatural about their appearance. Though definitely human-like and beautiful to behold, there are no traces of emotion on their faces at all. 
Stranger still, several of the citizens step off of buildings, striding through the air as easy as if they were on land. A royal-looking woman with a store on her forehead approaches you ahead of the others and extends her fingers as if in accusations. You arrive following the rain of rocks that the sorcerer foretold. Do not deny that it is the cause of your arrival. Not a promising start for first contact, but you try to explain that the meteor fell on its own and that you are merely looking, trying to locate it. But the woman simply stares at you with the same blank expression. That may be. The sorcerer will determine whether or not you speak the truth. Come with us if you wish to prove that you do not lie. Okay, gather all the... Set the following cards aside. Yeah, yeah. We should be able to just hit place. That probably does everything. What is this? Act... F four act two set up. Four act three set... Oh, my lord. This is a hefty one. What the... Oh, the... Look at that. Look at that script then. The road to Oz. Right above... Why is it all the way down here? Put it in the middle of the board. Fine. Put man mangaboos into play next to That sounds like a slur. Mangaboos. Massive. Pervasive. Each land the mangaboos location. Mangaboos cannot make attack for opportunity, which is nice. When mangaboos attacks you, take one damage or move once toward the Gorn Twinning Vines. You must choose one. Hi everybody, future Mimi here. I completely forget about this enemy for the entire first act. So, yep, that's an issue. There will be other uh, pervasive enemies, one for each act that I do remember. So this is the only one that I messed up on. Sorry, if I mean, if you were expecting an, a playthrough from me without any issues, I, I don't know what to tell you at this point. And enjoy the rest of the video. Okay, shuffle the encounter dot. And we have different setups for every. Oh, God, this is going to be annoying. Anyway, uh, agenda 1A Strangers in a Strange Land. The woman with the story gives a little explanation as she awaits your decisions to see the sorcerer. We are the Mangaboos, and you are not the first to trespass in our country. Our glass city has been damaged before by careless outsiders. No doubt the sorcerer expected more of your kind to follow this new destruction. The woman's words are as emotionless as she is making the words, your kind, seems particularly suspect. Are these people even human? 18 Doom Threshold. Okay. And then Act 1A, Mountains Out of Molehills. When you smooth out this difficulty, you take care not to forget your mission, to locate the color. Whatever the lights above the city are, they do not appear related, as the Mangaboos seem used to their presence. The meteorite must have impact further inland. The problem now is how to push inward as a tall line of mountains hems the section on the island end, or rather, out. If each undefeated investigator is at Black Pit Advance, is that even on the board? No. Where do we even begin? Each investigator begins play at Glass City. Are right you? Okay, let's do the mulligans. Only four chords. Uh, do I want all of it? I can only pitch three chords. I'll keep a guts. Two, three. We get an arcane, a six cents, which is very good for Shroud. Arcane initiate, which is going to be good to get the um, spells and deny existence. And what does Akali get? Shuffle, shuffle. Uh, read the signs. A familiar spirit. Alchemy and a we're definitely going to keep the Holy Rosary. Nah. I think we're going to push er, put everything but the Holy Rosary. Oh, we get Spirit Seeker, which is her unique asset. Uh, we get Robes of the Endless Night and Ast Astral Travel. Nothing. No spells. Okay. So, that is us. We start at the Glass City. Each port of the city, from the buildings themselves to the furniture inside them, is completely made of glass. Comfort was not as mine when it was built. 
When you remove from Glass City, disengage from each enemy engaged with you. Okay, that's that's spooky. Okay. First thing we're going to do is uh, we're gonna let Akachi go first. One, two. Play a rosary. Now she's at six. You can't play Rose of Endless Night because Janiana. Second action, we're gonna draw. Get a guts. Third action, we're gonna move either House of the Sorcerer, Mangabu Gardens. The Gardens of the Twenty Vines seems like it would be leading to the Black Pit, so we're gonna go to that way. Oh, it's probably this through the glass mountain. Yeah, because it says through the mountains. And besides, this is locked under a condition of you cannot enter unless we dealt with the sorcerer or pick the new. Pick, how are we going to pick a ruler? Okay, if that's the case, we're going to go up and do the house of the sorcerer. So, so that is, it seems to be a condition. House of the sorcerer, the main path of the city, all leads to a tall domed building in the middle of a glass city. The woman with the star confirms this is where the sorcerer resides. As an action, parlay, the sorcerer sees your dispute of his prediction as a threat to his authority. Test any skill at three to accept the sorcerer's challenge. The test gets plus one difficulty for each clue on house of the sorcerer. If you succeed, remember that you have dealt with the, dealt with the sorcerer. If you fail, take a damage and a horror. Okay. We're then going to let... Jacqueline go next. For three, we're going to play six cents. And then... What's the chaos bag? They don't have a chaos bag cheat. Oh, there it is. I put the thing in the wrong box. And the chaos bag is X is the number of current act and two minus two. So that's fine. First action that. Second action to move. And third action, we're going to, since he's got six cents, we are going to investigate. We are two up because of we're using our will. And two up. Okay, we succeed. This is not against a pervasive enemy. So I get a clue. I could have gotten a clue from there, but no. And that is it for our phase. Next is upkeep. Dark prophecy. Let's read the signs. And Doom goes to 1 out of 18. What's this button? I don't want to do that button. Who's the lead investigator? Probably the psychic. She gets a dragon. 2 fight, 3 health, 2 evade, retaliate. If Dragonette would be discarded via scenario effect, Move it directly to any investigator's location. It engages and makes an immediate attack against that investigator. Ew. And we don't have any fight yet, which is annoying. Next is... Act like it's... Put into play in your threat area. After you leave a location, add one resource to it. At the end of the round, lose one action for each resource on building fatigue. At the start of the round, and then discard it. Okay. So, how do I want to do this? Like, Alkali's one up to this fight, but. <sighs> Does one damage. She has six. They both have six. Okay, we're going to let Alkali draw first. <laughs> Another god, son of a... Okay, then she's going to deal with the Sorcerer. She's currently up to... Which hopefully is fine. Zero, got it. We have dealt with the sorcerer. And last action, I think she's going to engage. She has more fight spells, so hopefully she can handle it. Next is Jacqueline's turn. She's going to move to the Mangaboo Gardens. 
Land of the Mangaboos. Beyond rows of hedges, tall flowering bushes sit in a well-tended garden. You can't make out what is growing on the bushes, but they don't look like normal blooms. A forest shroud. Investigators spend six clues as a group. Remember that you picked a new ruler. Remove Mangaboos from the game. Huh. So we have one. We're currently up one to this. We'll commit a guts to be up three. I just kind of want the card draw to get some stuff. Got it. I card. I get a card draw from guts. Ritual candles is nice. Do I want to play it though? Um, I think we're just going to Sixth Sense again. Up one. Yellow. Auto fail. Okay. That's great. 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 And that is it for the investigator phase. Enemies, this thing is going to fight Accolade for one. Ow. And upkeep. Uh, Jacqueline gets a shriveling. Nice. And Alkalay gets a Spectral Razor. Okay, we finally got some fight. Next up is Doom. We go to 2 out of 18. And Encounters. Jacqueline gets put Alien Aurora into play next to the agenda deck. Search the Chaos Bag for the highest non-symbol Chaos token and seal it to Alien Aurora. Place one of your clues in your location. Discard this. Okay. Uh, that would be a plus one. And Accolade gets. If there's no copy of Chromophobia in your threat area, put into play in your threat area. This would be discarded. After you draw a color encounter, core take a horror. Test three if you succeed, discard Chromophobia for and blah. Blah. Okay. So we are going to let Accolade go first. We're just going to Spectral Razor this. And add your value to that. So that's six. We're, we're up eight to this. I feel very good about this. Got it. Did. That was one action. Second action, we're going to do this thing up three. Got it. Discard this. Last action. <sighs> it would be nice. Uh, I don't have enough for that, darn it. Mm. I think we're just going to draw a card for the last action. St. Hubert's Key, okay. Next is Jacqueline's turn. We're going to spend three to get the Shriven into play. For one. Second, we are going to investigate up one. Got it. We got a victory point. We need Yeah, we need three more clues. We can get all three clues right here. However, this could be something important. Go on the 20 vine, so we are going to spend our last action to go there. And we get Force, when you would leave the Garden of Twenty Vines, you must choose. Place one of your clues at this location. Lose an action, lose two resources. Okay. It is a victory point, so yeah. We definitely want that. So all the enemies are dead, so upkeep. Water protection. Jacqueline gets another Guts. Doom goes to 3 of 18. And encounters. She gets another enemy. Renegade Wentz. When investigator at Renegade... Which is location plays or activates an ability on a spell 
Ritual Hex or Curse. She gets plus one fight and plus one evade to the end of the turn. That's annoying. They all even have spells. And Jacqueline gets put Bestial Horn to play next to the agenda deck. I'm going to put this right here. I could have done... No, I could not have done this. When in damage from a creature's enemy attack is dealt to an asset you control, defeat that asset. And then around, if there's a creature enemy in play... If there is a creature enemy, discard it. Okay, whatever. So, first we're going to let uh, Jacqueline go first. She's going to spend a charge on Shriveling. So now it's 5 to 3, up 2. I've been, I could have been using her ability. I mean, I, ha I haven't really been needing it. So it's fine. I will use the ability now. Yeah. So I will reveal two additional tokens. Of the revealed, I can choose and cancel two non whatevers and whatever, or one auto fail once per round. So, three, I'm currently up two. Okay. Um, okay, we're definitely going to cancel the skull so I don't take a horror. This deals plus one damage. Okay, so it's dead. That was one action. Second action, we are going to investigate. Up three. Should be fine. Got it. And last action, up three again. Got it. Okay. Um, that is it for Jacqueline. Now it's Akachi's turn. Okay, so we need six clues to do that. She can get some, but is it worth read the signs for those? Maybe. She's just got like no, uh, what's it called? No spells. First action, she's going to move to here. Second action. She's going to play Robe of the Endless Knight. And third action, she's going to gain him money. Okay. Upkeep, no enemies. She gets a Deny Existence. Jacqueline gets a Sword Cane. That's really cool. Doom goes to four of 18. Encounters. Jacqueline gets put into play next to the agenda deck. Man. Wait. This is standard. Why are there... Is the chaos bag wrong? It was very much wrong. <sighs> I, how, who, who did this setup? Okay, so let's see what we got. Nothing's on the board, right? So, we should have a plus one. Check. Uh, two zeros. Check. Wait, where'd the things go? I just saw a cultist symbol in here. Is it in here? Oh my lord, I am checking the wrong bags. Okay, so plus one's on that one. Zero's on that one. It's fine, I know what I'm doing. And that was Jacqueline, I believe. So now it's a catchy peril. You must choose one, place one doom on the current agenda or attach prismatic evil to a non-story asset you control while well, attached to an asset, it gains decay 2. Place 2 Doom on the current agenda. This effect can cause the agenda to advance. 
Discard the attached asset. Hmm. She doesn't really have a good way of losing anything right now. We're just gonna put one doom on the agenda. Okay. So we're gonna let uh, Jacqueline go first. First action, she's going to investigate. Up with six cents, up three. I hate this game. I would have done the thing. Got it. Second action, up three again. Got it. And last action, we are going to move. And as the fourth action, we're going to lose two resources because I can't lose an action because I already used them all. And I don't want to place a clue on here because that's a victory point. Then as a fast action, we're going to use six clues. We had seven. Nice. Six clues. And we have picked a new ruler. So... Oh, wait, no, we can just enter this place now. Um, so, now it is a catchy turn. She is going to go into the glass mountains. Da, 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 da. Each enemy at Black Pit gains aloof. Each enemy... Oh, this is the Black Pit. Each enemy ignores investigators at Black Pit while resolving the hunter keyword. Okay, that's weird. So we advance. Wait, if each undefeated investigator, I called in time, I called in time. So that was one action. Second action. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Second action, I'm going to draw. Ezra Flame, let's go. And last session, we're gonna tap Azure Flame, spin two, and play the Azure Frame. Nice. And that is it. Upkeep. Uh, water protection. Akachi gets alchemical transmutation. That's slightly annoying. So she has to get rid of something. I don't know what I want to get rid of. I'll say Astral Travel. Okay. So Doom goes to 6 out of 18. Encounters. Jacqueline gets. Place 1 Doom. Oh, that's annoying. We're going to place a Doom on it. And a catch he gets. Really? Really? How many of these things are there? I am temp I, can I can't. I can't. I am tempted to water protection this. Uh, do I though? Yeah, F it. We're going to water protect on that. Take a horror. I'll put it on the Holy Rosary. And our phase. First action, Jacqueline moves. Now, we advance. Yeah, it's fine. We get... The royal mangaboo you picked up from the Goron seizes the store from her predecessor, placing it on her forehead daintily. With a more favorable ruler and the sorcerer's accusation silence, the mangaboos guide you to a small cave in one of the mountains. You bid farewell quickly before the emotionless people can feel you found reason to be suspicious of it again. Each investigator loses all their clues. That's annoying. Move each revealed location with victory axe and no clues on it to the victory display. That is these two. Where's the victory display? There it is. Remove each location except from Black Pit from the game. Delete. Then choose two of the three invisible valid locations at random and put them into play. Uh, that's. Where is. 
Four act two setup. Invisible valid. Okay. Place. I think that worked. Put the first line in second location okay, into, into play. Okay. So put two of these into play. Oh my lord, what is these snap points? That's gone. Okay, I guess that's like that. Then. Okay. Then. Uh, why is the invisible bears here? It did not say put invisible bears into play. That is weird. Okay. Val Act 2A, Valley of the Pyramid. Despite the darkness of the cave, the passage is easy to traverse and arrives at another idyllic landscape. Beyond this valley, a single angled mountain rises above its neighbors. You sight a narrow pathway coiling up around the mountain and up into the clouds, out of sight. As the only way you can see out of the valley, your course is clear. Objective is each undefeated investigator at second valley advance. You cannot enter first lane while invisible bears are in play. Force when you enter invisible valley, if the other copy of invisible valley is unrevealed, spawn the says okay. So it's not in play yet, only when I reveal this. Okay, invisible bears cannot make attacks of opportunity. While well, the investigators control fewer than four total clues in the group, and it can't be damaged. And first line cannot be interplay while invisible bears are in play. Okay, so that was one action. Second action, we're going to move. To this invisible alley. Hey, it's a creature, so this thing's going to go away soon. And we get, if invisible bears are in play, choose a different enemy at your location. Poor lay, test, but where X the fight. If you succeed, the enemy disengages from you and gains aloof until the end of the round. During the enemy phase, deal invisible bears damage to that enemy. Okay. And last action, we're going to investigate. Up like a bazillion. Elder sign. It wasn't, it canceled or ignored. So I just get a clue. So now the invisible bears are in play. It is, I think this is going away too. Invisible Valley. And the manga booth. Okay. Okay, so that was one action. Now that was her. Next, Accolade is going to move to here. The other one. Investigate. This task gets plus two difficulty. If you succeed, invisible bears can attack you during the enemy phase. Oh, so that could be a four or a two. Uh, we are going to investigate with. Re I can't investigate with that action and read the signs. Oh, I can't even do that. I'm broke. First action move. Second action gain of money. Second action play that for that. So I get six, eight to two. Up like a, a billion. Got it. And I get two clues because of that. Okay. So... We just need one more clue and we can start damaging this thing. Okay, so enemy phase, we each take one and one. Uh, this will get discarded now. Upkeep, Jacqueline gets a Spectral Razor, that's nice. Uh, Erklay gets Sign Magic. 
a little expensive right now, but whatever. Doom goes to 8 of 16. And Jacqueline gets test three will or two. <laughs> We're testing the will up to. We get don't even. If you fail, nope, we succeeded, so it doesn't matter. Akachi gets an enemy. Okay. So, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So it has four health. It's fine. So first, uh, Akachi, now Jacqueline's going to investigate. Up three. Got it. Got a clue. Now we have enough clues to do the thingamajiggy. So now she's going to fight it. She's currently up two with shriveling. Only has four health. Two, we're going to use her ability. One, two, three. Got it. Dealt two damage. And she's going to do it again. It is elite. Do I just do shriveling or do I do I spectral razor? Oh, we're just going to do shriveling. Did I really take one off? Yeah, 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 it's fine. Got it. It is dead. That was fairly simple. Next for Jacqueline's turn. Akachi's turn. Sorry. Um, she is going to Spectral Razor this. No, not Spectral Razor. Azure Frame. Okay, so activating this ability so it gets plus one fight. So she's up three. Up one. It is dead. Okay. And her next two actions, she's just going to put her clues back to put the plus one and the zero back into the chaos bag. Seems fine. Upkeep. Deny existence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need to discard one. I guess the initiate and Alkali gets. Oh, that's terrible. Choose and discard all but one cord in your hand. I guess I have to do my freaking unique ability because at least I can start bouncing Azure Flame back to hands if I have to. Okay. Oh yeah. In case you didn't notice, Amnesia is a catchy's weakness. I for and sh uh, Jacqueline's is my worst nightmare. So we're going to uh, our phase. A catchy will go first. One to move up. There are no invisible players in play, so we can enter. Discord an asset you control poorly. Remember that you trade a box of for clatters. Hmm. Okay, and it has four shroud, two clues. Is it if each undefeated is at the top location? Okay. Uh, it's, that was one action, second action. Probably just move again, ain't much you can do. Second landing. After you evade an enemy at second landing, move to a connecting location. Okay. I guess that's something. Jacqueline, first action is going to be to move. Second action is going to be to play the sword game. Do I? No, we're not going to do that just yet. Second action is going to investigate. Up one, up two, up three. 
And we lose by... That is the thing. I was totally going to do that. Really? Oh, wait. If I cancel that, I'm up three. It still works out because I got the plus one. It works. It's fine. And last action... Oh, I draw a card because of guts. All in the grud. Last action... Do I investigate again? Up one. We're going to play Ritual Candles. Okay. That's it. No enemies. Upkeep. Jacqueline gets a prescient. And Akachi gets another Azure Flame. I mean, it's something. Doom goes to nine. Halfway there, living on a prayer. Then... Encounters Jacqueline gets. There are no. After you draw a color encounter card, take a horror. Test three to discard it. Okay. Catchy gets. Put powder to spoke into play in your threat area and choose your higher skills. That's going to be easy. When you initiate a skill test that uses the chosen skill, discard a card at random. Test the chosen skill three. If you succeed, discard powder. I mean, this is nothing. So, first thing we're going to do is. Uh, we are again going to do investigate up one using my ability. One, two, three. That's like the best I could ever hope for. Got the last clue. Second action, we are going to do this up two. Minus three. Last action, we're going to discord an asset and we trade a box for clatters. We're going to discord shriveling. Okay, and then a catchy. We're gonna do powder and smoke up three for that test. Got it. One. Second action she's gonna draw another robes. Third action she's gonna play her second azure flame, I guess. And that's it. Upkeep, Jacqueline gets. Promise of power. One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine. We're gonna get rid of Prescian, I guess. Jacqueline gets her cat. That's nice. Doom goes to ten out of eighteen. Encounter Jacqueline gets a creature. It's not a color, so that's probably fine. Jacqueline gets Wolves, Hunter Retaliate Alert. After it makes an attack via Retaliate Alert, it loses Retaliate Alert to the end of the round. Okay. So, first action, we're going to let Jacqueline go first. One, two, we're going to Spectral Rager this thing. So that's five, seven to up five. Do I. I'm so scared of doing an auto fail. We're up five. Fine, we're just going to do it. One, two, three. We're going to ignore the elder sign so I can draw a card. Not prescient. This thing is dead, dead. Second action, we're going to try to get rid of this again. Up two. Up three. After you commit. Uh, after the test ends of chaos token, the name type was revealed. When the test, you may return a spell card from your discard pile to my hand. Do I have any in my discard pile? Spectral Rager, yes. We're going to say. Symbol. And then we're also going to do. One Dark Prophecy to try to get a symbol. So I choose five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so if no token was resolved, choose any token to resolve and ignore the rest. So we're going to choose the one with the symbol, so we get a draw. Hey, we get the wither, and we're going to bring the spectral razor back to our hand. That was a good turn. And last action, we're going to move up. 
And now each undefeated investigator is at the second landing. We will advance. Now far above the invisible valley, the gloom around the pyramid mountains gradually begins to fade. You continue up and through another layer of clouds to another strange spectacle. The landscape before your eyes, from flat plains to distant hills, is made entirely of wood. You step cautiously forward, but your incursion is immediately noticed by a grotesque wooden creature that observes you from a short distance. Slowly begin to amass. We lose all our clues again. Move each revealed location of victory axe and those clues onto the victory. Was there one? Oh, there was one. Okay. Wait, this one. Remove each other location except for second landing from the game. Doot, doot, doot. Just delete all y'all. Then, choose two of the three city. Oh, it's, this is four act three set up. Place. Um, doot, that's probably fine. Put them in play. Remove the other copies of City of Gorgos. Put the Country of the Gorgos and Prison Tower's location into play. Country of the Gorgos, Prison Lata. Okay. They have Gorgos up here, which is when you enter Country of the Gorgos, spawn the set aside Gorgos next to the agenda deck. Gorgos cannot make a tax of opportunity to move actions or actions with the counter cards. After it attacks, you move one location towards Prison Tower. If you trade for box of gor clatters, Gorgos cannot attack you until the end of the round limit once per game per investigator. Okay. And the new act, Escape from Gorgoyles. The growing legion of core Gorgoyles leers at you, scattered about the wooden landscape. You must evade them, but where to? All around you are wooden mountains surrounding the strange country. You've come too far to simply flee black across the mountains. There must be a way to escape the Gorgoyles country and continue inland. If Gorgoyles are at your location, spend one ammo from a firearm as at your control. Evade. Very loud noises can repel the Gorgoyles. This evasion attempt targets the Gorgoyles. You get plus two. If each undefeated investigator is at prison tower, investigators may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance, which is eight. Okay. Okay, so that is Jacqueline's turn. Next is... I mean, we want to move to the prison tower, which is kind of weird. So, Akechi's gonna draw for one. Spectra Razor is okay. Oh, wait, no, we have enemies attached. I might know that. So, first, we're gonna Spectral Azure Flame this. And we are up three. Up three, let's go. Got it, they are dead. Now, the second action we're gonna draw. Third action, we're gonna move in, I guess. When you enter, spawn it, it is spawned. After you discover any amount of clues from Country of the Gargoyles, ready Gargoyles, victory won. Okay. And encounter upkeep. Well, this thing is going to attack. When it would attack, move one location toward Prison Tower. We'll move to here, I guess. If you succeed on a jelly test at the copy of City of Gargoyles, discover a clue. Okay. And then upkeep, she gets a voice of raw. Um, she has to discard something. We're probably gonna discard voice of raw, are we though? Are we? We'll discard olive. And Akatsu's gonna get guts, uh, not uh, guts, unexpected curves. Doom goes to 11. Jacqueline gets wolves, which is fine. Akachi gets place into your threat area. After you leave a location, oh, it's this one again. Okay, so, our turn. Uh, first, Jacqueline is going to play Sword King. After it enters play, immediately trigger its attack ability without paying its cost. So fight, you may use your thing, which we will. So we're up two, two, up two. 
Do I want to do this? Nah. Or do I just want to Spectral Razor this and be done with it? Because this is going to take two actions. Yeah, let's just do it. Up to... We'll use the ability. Okay, that is minus current act number, which is three. So that's minus four, minus three because of that. I fail. Okay, I take a damage. Now I can't Spectral Razor. Okay, now we're going to evade it. Uh, we're currently up two to this evade. We're going to commit Promise of Power just to be sure. Two, three, four. Not four. Just one. And up like a bazillion. Minus two. It is evaded. Does this thing hunt? It does hunt. And last action, we are going to move. Jacqueline's turn next. I don't want to leave locations because then I have to lose one action. But then it's like, what else am I going to do? Uh, we'll draw a card. Angered Spirits into playing a threat area. Exhaust a spell asset, move one charge from that asset to Angered Spirits. When the game ends, if it's, this has fewer than four charges, you suffer one physical trauma. Okay. We're going to exhaust both of these things to move that. And that was one action. <laughs> uh, second action, we draw again. Six cents. Let's do it. I don't have the money for it. I mean, I don't have the slots for it. I don't really want to do this yet. Okay. We're going to spend one to play the cat, and then I'll play that thing next turn. Okay, so, any phase, this thing is going to move me once towards the prison tower. Move Jacqueline once. We'll move her here. If he succeeds at a Will test at this copy of the City of Gold. Discover a clue. Very good. Prison Tower. The Vestigators of Prison Tower cannot draw cards or gain resources during the upkeep phase. Okay. So no upkeep phase for you. Which is fine. Uh, upkeep for Jacqueline is a Uncaze of Soul. It's controlling. And we have 12 Doom of 18. And... Oh, she's going to lose one action because of this thing. Yep. So, encounter Jacqueline gets more. That is horrible. Wolf, after it readies, investigators move it one location to the nearest investigator. Okay. Jacqueline gets. I mean, Akachi gets. Okay. Oh, this is annoying. So we're going to let... Okay, we're going to uncage the soul of the Spectral Razor to attack this thing. We're letting Jacqueline go first. We are currently up three. I will use my ability. Up three. I have to. Yeah, I'll cancel the elder sign to be draw a card. Get that. That kills it. Yes. For one action. Second action. We are going to. Oh, I, I succeeded a will test, so I get a clue here. Second action. We are going to investigate with uh, six cents. Currently up one. I'll play. I'll commit raw to be up two. Hopefully it's fine. 
minus four. And six cents again. Up one. Um, how many clues do we need? We need eight. Yeah, up one. Zero, I got a clue. I got two clues because of the thing I'm building. Okay, then it is your girl's turn. She is going to, you should be unexhausted. We're gonna move these in. Then she's going to do this ability. I should have discarded cards. Because when you initiate tests that uses the chosen skill, discard a card from your hand at random. Okay. We're going to discard two. Because I, f I know I did the test before and I forgot to discard at random. Robe is fine. Whoop. Spectre Razor is slightly annoying, but it's fine. And we are up three to this test. About minus four. <sighs> we are going to play the sixth sense. And that is it. Uh, enemy phase, this moves me one to here. This guy is going to go up here. Okay, upkeep, we can't do anything except for ready everything. And then Doom goes to 13 out of 18. Jacqueline gets a dragon. Tax you to score an asset you control, cancel the attack. Okay, 3 5. And Akachi gets. We lose a plus one. Okay. Hmm. We're gonna let Jacqueline go first. Or are we letting Jacqueline go first? Okay, up three to this stupid test. My thing. Got it, this is gone. Next I'm going to attack. Yeah, attack with Azure Flame. I'm currently up three. Up three for two damage. That is minus three, so we succeed. And we're gonna do it again. Got it, so it's down to one. Okay, now it's Jacqueline's turn. She is just going to use the sword cane. She's currently up two. Up two, but we're using her ability. Okay, get kill it. Get a card draw. Nice, get a victory point. That was one action. Second action, we're going to move. And third action, we're going to investigate with a sixth sense. Up one. Uh, do it. Cut. That's a skull, which means you may choose a reveal location connected. You're, if you're at that location instead, you may use either shroud So we're gonna get this one clue. Okay, and we're halfway there on clues. So now it's the hunter phase. Jacqueline's gonna use her once of game ability. 
for that. Hunter's gonna hunt. Engage if her take a damage. Did I want to do that? We're gonna say we did not want to do that. Okay. And then upkeep. Jacqueline gets another promise of power. Akachi gets another unexpected courage. Doom goes to 14 of 18. Jacqueline gets. Okay, another one of these bestial hungers. Akachi gets. Put into play in your threat area. Treat the text box of each ally and favorite asset you control as if they were blank. Discard Curse of the Frozen Heart. You may exhaust an ally favor you control to reduce the cost ability of one. So we lose Azure Flame because we no longer have an additional spell slot. Okay, that's fine. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to let Jacqueline go first. First action move. Second action, investigate. Currently up to. What kind of courage to be up for? Got the clue. Second action, we're going to do it again. Same thing, even with that. That's another clue. Or do I want to do that location? It's a victory point and it's further away. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to get the one that's further away. So we just need two more clues. Next, it is Jacqueline's turn. She's going to move up for one. She's here. First, she's going to commit Promise of Power. Now, we're going to just do Investigate with her ability. Up, up one. Up one. Up two, up three. And that's a failure. That's a failure. Okay. And then promise of power being up like a bunch. Got it. Get a clue. Five, six, seven. We're one clue shy. So enemy phase. We're both going to use our ability for the gargoyles. This one's going to hunt. It's going to attach to a catchy because she's got robes and a cat. Then upkeep. Jacqueline gets a crystal pendulum. A catchy gets another six cents. Fantastic. Doom goes to 15 out of 16. Encounters. Jacqueline gets another dragon. Uh, Akachi gets his, this thing. Okay. So. How much is this? This is one damage. Five, six, seven. This is one damage. Hmm. We're going to let Akechi go first. Uh, she's going to attack the hounds with Azure Flame up like three. Opa. I hate this game so much. Then we're going to do it again. Up three. <laughs> At least it lost Retaliate. And then... Uh, we're just going to engage, I think. This thing. Okay. Next, it is Jacqueline's turn. She is, she just needs one clue. Six cents. Let's go. We're up one. Uh, 
up one. Hold on. First action pendulum to be up two. Uh, we'll commit a deny existence to be up three. Using her ability. One, two, three. Got it. Barely. At this. And last action, we are just going to. I mean, she's fine. Do whatever. We'll just move. And. Okay, enemy phase, we get attack. She gets hit by two, kills the cat, and kills this. This pushes her one towards the prison tower. And then we will spend the requisite number of clues to advance, which is eight. Okay. Through your various encounters with the gargoyles, you manage to separate a few from the wooden wings. At the prison tower, the highest building in the city, you construct a makeshift glider powered by the borrowed wings. There's no time to test with the silent creatures on a constant vigil. You and your companions get a running start and make a leap to freedom. Okay, we lose, we lose out on two victory points, but... I mean, that was kind of a little close, so whatever. Resolution 2. Resolution 2. Your rickety contraption nearly falters, but the attached wings begin to flap of their own accord, carrying the glider higher and higher. The gargoyles pursue in their silent anger, but as soon as your glider clears the wooden mountains surrounding their domain, they suddenly give up the chase. With confidence building, you trust your glider to keep up its flight and look to the horizon. Descending past the clouds that first shrouded your trip, way up to the Gorogoyle lands. Then proceed to Resolution 3. Resolution 3. Finally, beyond the difficult path you first took on the island, your flight carries you over a vast and empty desert. It astonishes you that so many more of the island lies beyond the first hurdle. How could such an enormous land mass lie undiscovered by the outside world for so long? On one cold walk... Blah. One could walk for days and still not be lost, and still be lost in the barren sands. I know how to read. As the land rushes beneath you, a vibrant color suddenly blooms into view. You tighten your grip on the controls, ready to take evasive action, but soon seeing that the color is not the cause. Ahead of you, the desert abruptly meets rock, and a lush forest grows beyond it. But not a normal one, by any means. Each tree, shrub, and blade of grass is tinted a bright red color, as if simply painted on. You temper your wonder with the task at hand, scanning the forest for landmarks as you fly over it. The moment you cross the border between the desert and the forest, your craft shudders violently. Alarmed, you turn your attention to the wings and find that the moving ports have somehow locked up completely. You lean and pull tensely, trying to coax the last bits of list out of your inert flyer. Without power, you can only glide forward and hope that you have enough altitude to clear the impending treetops. Within inches of the tree line, your flight path suddenly bursts into open space, where the red field thins out and slowly merges with the bright green one. Further in other directions, you spot similar forests of vibrant yellow, blue, and purple, but a far greater sight catches your immediate attention. In the center of the green field, a city with tall walls and taller spires stands proudly. Like the field around it, the city is a rich shade of green, made from glittering by the bright gemstones embedded in the city walls. Truly, this emerald city looks more like a single great palace for all its opulence. Your craft bows downward more by the second, but with great effort, you're able to turn the blunt crash into a rough coaching to the end. You skid to a stop in the soft green sod, splintering one of the wings entirely, but managing to keep the rest of the plane and its occupants alive and well. You breathe a thankful sigh and start to pick yourself up out of the wreck, when a soldier with bright green whiskers and an equally green uniform rushes up. He levels an old blunder bluss at you, gauging you with a worried look on his face. Speak up now. How and why have you come to Oz? Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X of each coordinate display, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Not bad. Could have been more. One or two more, but I wanted to get the heck out of Dodge. Proceed to interlude one, the royal audience. Oh, that's a lot of words. That's a lot of words.
Is this? Okay, whatever. We are going to save this for next time. So, until then, I hope you enjoyed the scenario. Uh, it, you can find this. I'll put the link to where you can get this in the description. And until next time, uh, take care.